What's up guys, it's Ray here and welcome to my third ever art conspiracy theory video. Now if you guys follow me through the rest of the year, you guys know that it's probably not a secret that I love a good conspiracy. Kendall Ray, Shane Dawson, stuff they don't want you to know, documentaries on Netflix, I am all about conspiracy theories. And every year around Halloween, since I am an art channel, I do an art conspiracy theory video. Now obviously I'm not going to show you anything graphic or crazy or anything super scary or gross, but I am going to show you guys some really creepy paintings, so if you don't like that kind of creepy style video or you don't enjoy the style of content, um, I I have a whole entire other archive of, you know, other videos where I test out markers and stuff like that. But all my other fellow crackpots, people who love to be scared, people who love Halloween, this video will be for you. Now the second disclaimer is that these conspiracy theories are exactly what they sound like. They're just conspiracy theories. They're not 100% fact, they're not intended to harm or hurt or, you know, make a bad name for any person, place, company, or thing. And this video is just me reporting on some strange facts and just some like weird coincidences. And I want you as the viewer to decide what you guys fully think. And I guess like the third disclaimer is that usually these videos get dinged by YouTube or suppressed because it's kind of like a weird creepy kind of vibe. So um, if you would like to watch any of my other ca uh, catalog of videos after this or any of my other videos, that would be absolutely everything. And just one more time, I just really want to hammer it in that we are going to be talking about some very dark stuff today, but I'm going to try to be as absolutely respectful as I can and try to portray these ideas as respectfully as I can. So guys, without further ado, let's get into the conspiracy theories. Now this first conspiracy theory is kind of turned into like a tradition on my YouTube channel and that is the conspiracy that aliens have been in artwork for centuries. Now this first theory goes is that here on Earth we are such a small planet compared to the vast, endless nothingness of space. I personally believe that there's absolutely no way that we can be completely alone in this universe. And as of right now, I highly doubt that we're the smartest civilization in space. There's probably aliens out there who are so much more ahead of us. Like they have been around for billions and billions of maybe even trillions of years. And I think there's absolutely no way that we have not been visited by aliens on this earth. And throughout history, there have just been examples after examples after examples of aliens in artwork. Now I just want to warn you because every single year that I post this segment in my videos, people literally think that these are fake, but every single painting or artwork I am showing you today is a real piece from history. So here you go. Like, that is nuts, right? And those images that I just showed you, those are the tipping points of all the imagery that you can find online. I am not kidding you guys, there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of search results for paintings or artwork in the past that feature some kind of alien-like imagery. And the weird thing is, is that so many of these imagery, so many of these paintings, a lot of the imagery and the aliens that we are seeing, it's consistent. Like a lot of them have the same colored skin, or the same eye shape, or the same head shape, or they're consistent in height. And it's not like back then they could just like like hop on Twitter and see like all the current hoaxes going around. These were people who were spread out over thousands and thousands of years from all around the world coming up with these exact same imageries. Call me crazy, but in my opinion, I think that's more than just a coincidence. All right, so this next theory is truly gonna be a mystery that we will never find. And that's the conspiracy that Michelangelo rebelled against the church. Now, whenever you talk about the absolute most famous artists who have ever graced this planet, you absolutely cannot forget to mention Michelangelo. He carved the statue of David before he was 30 years old. That's absolutely nuts. That's like somebody my age carving out this like incredible statue that just absolutely shows the accomplishments of humankind. And not only was Michelangelo one of the greatest sculptors to ever live, he was also one of the best painters to ever live. Here are just a few of his artworks.
Now, if you don't really know much about art history or the times of the Renaissance, churches at the time had a lot of money. And even though the Renaissance was a time of more free thinking and they did allow science, it was still very taboo to criticize the church and express your disbeliefs. So a lot of the times people had to express their opinions in private or in secret messages. And that's where this theory comes in, is that Michelangelo hid secret messages in his artwork that was commissioned by the church, criticizing them. Now, in 1990, a physician named Frank Merkerberg, Meshurb, Meshberger, when he noticed something a little bit too coincidental with his work. He noticed that the section where God is reaching out his hand perfectly, perfectly matches an actual human brain and the very beginning of the spinal cord. And so the theory is, is that maybe Michelangelo was saying God was created from our own head. Or maybe it's some kind of commentary towards the church at the time. And I know what you're thinking, like, you know, who knows, maybe that truly is a coincidence. But nope, it does not end there. In 2010, Ian Sook and Raphael Tamargo noticed that not just in one, but many of Michelangelo's paintings contained the human brain. Again, it just adds up so perfectly. And who knows, maybe Michelangelo just wanted to say that humans are made from God and that's perfect. And who knows, maybe it could be something darker. So this last theory, I have no idea why this is not talked about no more. I have no idea why it's swept under the rug. And I think out of all the theories that I've ever done, this one single-handedly by far shocked me the most. And that is the theory that Francisco Goya's paintings from his black period were not actually painted by him. Now, Francisco Goya was an artist who was alive between the late 1700s through the early 1800s. And he is most known for a series of paintings that were found in his house after he had passed away titled The Black Series. And these paintings are very disturbing, they're very creepy, and once I tell you the story behind it, it's actually a really sad story. Now Goya was a very accomplished painter back in his day and when you look at his original paintings they look so different from the ones that I just showed you. There's a hint of realism, romanticism, the human anatomy and the shadows and everything is just absolutely out of this world. In fact, he was so talented for his time that he was the official painter for King Charles IV and Ferdinand VII. And by the standards of previous times, his paintings were considered, even back then, rebellious. Uh, for example, here is a clothed version of one of his paintings. You'll notice that the eyes are directly painted at the viewer, which for the nude version to be looking directly at the viewer back then, that was considered very, very scandalous. And generally speaking, Francisco had a pretty good life. He, like I said, was employed by royalty, and he even taught his son how to paint as well. And he lived a pretty good life working for royalty until the empire that he was working for fell and a new empire came over. Which during this time, he was like, screw that, I'm not gonna work for you guys now, I'm gonna go do my own thing. And this is the part where the story takes a turn. Uh, at this point in time, he was old in age, he was constantly afraid of dying, he was losing his hearing, and it's documented that during this time that he suffered with a very severe undiagnosed mental disorder. And with the combination of all those things and him being upset with the current political status, he retreated to his house to paint his own private paintings, which is what we have known to be the Black Series. And this is where the conspiracy starts. It is documented that during the very last few years of his life, he gave the rights to his house to his grandson. The reason he did that is because he moved into a caretaker's house, who ended up actually being his very last painting. And when you look at this last painting and you compare it to previous paintings from his earlier years, the style is very similar and looks nothing like the black paintings. And there's a lot of weird stuff surrounding the paintings. The first one is that his signature, nope, not on a single one of these paintings. And these aren't just little tiny paintings, these are large paintings that would have required a very large amount of space. All of these paintings were literally just plastered on the wall. One day he literally just got the paint and started painting all over his walls. The second one is that there is no official documentation, none of his family ever talked about these giant weird disturbing paintings on the wall. In order for all of these paintings to have fit in his house, 
he would have had to have these paintings literally in every single room in his little house. So anytime he would have had friends, family, guests, anybody over, they would have immediately been able to see all these paintings, these large disturbing paintings, but literally not a single person ever mentioned these paintings on the wall. The next piece of evidence that supports this theory is that years and years later, it was discovered that the second story of this house was added after he passed away. So therefore making it physically impossible for him to have painted on a second story that was never there. And that leads to the next impossibility that there was absolutely no space. It was physically impossible for him to have fit these large paintings in a one story building. Like that, that is crazy. The next weird thing about it is that as soon as he passed away, the paintings weren't immediately donated. What happened is that years later, an art dealer and collector bought the house for a lot of money from the grandson and son, which was really suspicious because once he bought the house years later, he was like, oh, by the way, I have this giant collection of 15 paintings from this mentally disturbed famous artist that I have just been sitting on, here you go. I feel that any rational person, as soon as Goya passed, they would have immediately tried to get it into a museum or immediately tried to archive it in some way, not just let it sit around for a long time. And to make matters worse with the uh, art historian slash collector, he claimed that there were 15 paintings in the house, but magically somehow one whole entire giant painting that was literally connected to the wall was missing. Which is crazy because it's like, how do you lose a painting that's literally attached and painted onto the wall? And all of this leads to the question, well, who did paint all of these paintings in theory? Well, the theory takes us back to earlier. Do you remember when I said that he taught his son how to paint? His son, even though he could paint, never fully pursued as an artist. He instead went to be a banker in investments. So unfortunately, the theory goes, his son decided to take advantage of the situation, forge some really disturbing painting, and claim that they were by a mentally disturbed artist at his hardest time in his life, and his son and grandson sold them for a lot of money. And all of this takes us to current day, where all 14 of the paintings are on permanent display with Goya's name, and he is forever known as the troubled artist. Um, well, to end on a lighter note, uh, those are all the theories that I have for you today. Um, again, this wasn't trying to defame anybody, trying to doubt anybody, discredit anybody. These are all just theories that I'm reporting on. If you would like to see last year's video, I will leave it up above as well as a playlist down below. I hope you guys have a very safe, very spooky Halloween, and I will see you guys next video. Bye!